So I received a question if I could say something about the energetic structure of an egregore. Well, that's a little bit of a hard question to answer. Um, because from the human perspective we cannot really fully comprehend uh, the structure of an egregore. Um, it is very much outside our limited mind frame. Um, so in experience um, it is most similar to a city or uh, a railway station or an airport. So an egregore is very much a central structure from where it is possible to have connections to lots of different worlds and solar systems, peoples and layers of awareness. So uh, it's very much like a, like a central hub for the people to uh, travel through. And at the same time, it's also very much like a city um, because you have your residence there, you have your role there, you have your work there, you have your friends there, you have your family there, the people you, you travel to work with. Um, so it's, it's very much also like a home. Um, the egregore also has different, um, yeah, you could say, layers or clubs. So very much like a city where you have like the, the, the slums and uh, the really the industrial neighborhood and the commercial center. Uh, in the same way, an egregore has areas uh, where yeah, people of a similar function tend to cluster together. So people who are all like warriors or all healers or all leaders, they tend to aggregate a little bit within that egregore. So the egregore is not a very homogeneous whole and also access to other parts of the egregore tends to come gradually. As you spend more time in it, then um, it becomes more accessible to you. So it's very much like moving to a new city in the new city you know to find your home, your way to work and your way to the, uh, to the grocery store. And only after time you start to find out where all the different organs of that city are and how to find them, how to work with them, how to access them. And uh, it takes a lot of time. Uh, growth within an egregore is not something which happens in just a few years in general. Uh, it is more something which generally happens over several lifetimes where you slowly but surely um, uh, allow your consciousness to progress to uh, be able to encompass and comprehend more parts of the structure. Uh, the structures are also vast. Um, they often have millions of members and uh, they also span many different places and also many different times and also the nature of the inhabitants is very different. They can be very simple elemental and nature spirits or uh, little parasitical entities on the lower levels and angels and enlightened beings uh, on the top. Uh, so you also have to come understand that even though you might have uh, a familiarity with the agricore it is still impossible to comprehend all the beings within the egregore. It is like living in a city. There are pigeons, there's dogs, there's cats, there's cockroaches, there's mice, trees, grass. And similarly, there's an enormous variety within every egregore of beings from many different uh, yeah, forms, many different solar systems, many different times and traditions. So. The egregore is what you could say, the, uh, like the internet, the mainframe, which connects all these different energies and allows them to uh, be, become interconnected. Um, in the books of a science fiction writer, Ayn M. Banks, he also describes how, um, in a way, a human consciousness um, or could be uploaded into what he calls the substratum, uh, which is in a way an operating system, a virtual reality. And for the being within that reality, everything is real. There are 
laws, there are um, towers, there are other intelligences and there's also a lot of freedom, there's a lot of um, transformation possible because the place is not bound to the same laws as the physical universe is. So it is kind of like a separate universe uh, in which you exist and depending on your own qualities, capabilities and station within that universe, um, the rules change a little bit. Um, so an anchor core is very much really like a world onto itself. You can really see it as a very complex ecosystem, a little bit like we need much larger than a city in complexity, more like a country in levels of complexity. Um, if you look at the very fabric of the energy within the agricore, um, it is very much a composite. Um, regardless of what cosmos the agricore is from or um, what method it employs, the energies which in a way um, are creating the structure um, invariably have a core energy which is the highest impulse within that agricore. And a little bit like, um, like a crystal, around this very highest, most pure energy of the most perfect idea, different layers of other energies aggregate to give it form, to give it body. So it is a little bit like dipping um, a little, um, yeah, let's say, catalyst into a solution and from there it crystallizes outward. And all the energies, they are in a way duplicating this core energy on their own levels. So it is very much like a, a rainbow, you could say. And uh, depending on the egregore, certain egregores only exist uh, on very high levels or they've lost actually their lower energies. Uh, this also often happens if an egregore is abandoned, so if there's no more living people who are part of the aggregate, all the lower energies start to evaporate and fall away. But the higher core energies, they tend to remain. Um, so these lost aggregates, you can often see like, well, like golden cities. Well, if you have aggregates which descend all the way down to very low levels, then they're often more like blackish, grayish, brownish uh, in experience. Uh, because the beings from these lower levels have to be able to also interact with them. Uh, so that is often really the, the, uh, the lowest common denominator, um, which in a way makes the egregore yeah, crystallize outward into more and more uh, layers. Um, so often you can tell by going into the egregore and feeling uh, the structure of it, on what um, level is it. And this is also one of the nice things about it. So if an anchor core is really, you could say, almost overpopulated, then the feel of being in the anchor core is yeah, being like in a little bit of a grimy, dungy uh, place. But if you go in an underpopulated anchor core, everything is more white or golden or silverish. Uh, because you can really sense the higher vibrations. So it, it tends to be that if an egregore gets more deserted, it be also becomes more appealing for people to be there because they can directly experience these higher powers, these higher influences and feel more guided by the egregore and by the experience of being a part of the egregore. While if an egregore is overpopulated, especially if it is overpopulated by beings from very low levels of consciousness, then yeah, it tends to feel more, uh, more earth-like, you could say. Um, but also in these more earth-like egregores, there's usually a lot more practical knowledge available uh, because there are beings there from the same level of existence. So they understand what you are dealing with what your problems are, your financial problems, your time problems, your health problems. So you can get support for these types of things 
Well, if you go into these very nice, pure, clean agrocorps, um, they will give you yeah, philosophical insights and um, interesting inspiration, but very little practical uh, awareness because these lower vibrations are just um, yeah, not formed enough to guide you on those levels as well. So there are advantages and disadvantages, but ultimately it is um, a process of going into the deeper and thereby higher levels of the agricore you're a part of. And um, this is also a method to uh, gain a higher position, a higher station within the agricore itself. So the closer you get to understanding the core of the agricore, the highest principles of the agricore, the better you will be able to act also on the higher levels of the agricore. And that doesn't automatically mean leadership. It can be any role. It can also be healing. It can be creating. Uh, but you become more of an avatar, of an incarnation of this highest impulse. And thereby you also become inspiring uh, uh, a leader or a muse uh, or a helper to other members of that same agricorn. Um, there is usually a defense mechanism though, because also an agricorn needs to protect itself from enemy agricorns. So if you go digging into the structure of the agricorn and trying to find the higher layers of that agricorn without the proper, um, yeah, support the real readiness uh, the proper maturation of your system uh, then you can also be seen as a threat to that agricore especially if you're quite impure if you're working with many different traditions many different agricores you're relatively new to the agricore you've only spent a few incarnations working with it then the chances of you tripping some self-defense mechanisms are a lot bigger so um, working very ambitiously to gain higher positions in the agricore is not the way it is done. Uh, not even in uh, Arimanic and Luciferical agricores it is not done. You are supposed to work on your level for the common good, for that ideal, and by the effect of working you will gain a transformation and automatically move upward. Uh, you're not supposed to, in a way, go mining for gold and uh, digging up the egregore and trying to get rich quick. <laughs> so, just a little word of warning there.